WWE announces WWE Battlegrounds, and if there's one thing I can tell you, it's gonna be a game that's gonna be fun for five minutes. You're then gonna look around the room and say, why are we still playing this? And then bring it back to GameStop for a dollar and some change the next day. They should have never bothered. If the 2K series was done, take the year off. But again, they wanna just throw something out there that looks like it was constructed from a third grader overnight. That's their decision. Apollo Crews is hurt, and that's not good. Just when the guy's starting to build momentum and get some TV time, he is injured, and it looks like it could be a real injury. Um, and WWE is going to have a Money in the Bank qualifying match on Raw to see the final spot for the uh, spot. Jinder Mahal is back. Don't care what he does. Stay away from the main event scene. Brett Favre thinks that Aaron Rodgers is not going to retire a Green Bay Packer. My only question is, where is he going to go? Andy Dalton is released by the Cincinnati Bengals. All of this and much more right here on the channel. Make sure you subscribe, hit the like button. Like button pushes it out in front of other people and other people as well. Stay right here. When you're first looking at the trailer, which should be presented right here in the top part of your screen, one of the things that comes to my mind immediately for WWE Battlegrounds is WWE All-Stars 2.0, because that's exactly what it is. Now, we all knew that WWE was, was debating. Uh, it, it looked very unlikely for 2K to be released this year. Uh, we didn't think that we were going to get a 2K21, and we didn't. And they announced earlier about last week, I made a video on it. You can also hit that. That link should be, if it's not in the description, it should be somewhere on my channel. I do have to organize my playlist a little bit better. That's one of the things I need to work on. They announced that 2K21 is canceled. But they stated that there's going to be some alternative, alternative, some type of game. And I knew right then and there that even though the 2K WWE games are not good at all, I knew right then and there that... It was going to be a disaster. I don't even have to look at this game. You can look at the trailer. If you've been a wrestling fan and you are an avid enjoyer of their games, you can look right at this trailer and it'll tell you one thing. This game is going to be a joke. Okay? Now, maybe to somebody that's four or five years old, they might enjoy this. But again, the idea of a game is to make sure everybody enjoys it. 2K, and I've always said that since WWE has switched over to 2K, each year their games have gotten progressively worse. I feel like 2K13, 14, those were okay. I didn't think 15 was that great. Didn't think 16 was great. Thought 17 was okay. 18 was not really that great. 19 was good. And 20 was the icing on the cake. 2K20, in my eyes, is the worst wrestling game that has ever been made. Okay, and that will be my opinion. Whether you like it or not, that's up to you. So we announced that there's going to be some, all type, some type of alternative. And that Monday, we get this trailer for WWE Battlegrounds. WWE already ran this route. They've already done this. They've made WWE All-Stars, which was, I can tell from looking at it, it is a mirror image of the same exact thing. The only thing that this game might offer is a little bit more crazy and out-of-the-box type, type of things and better graphics. Graphics is something that they should probably work on because WWE 2K20 had the worst graphics of a wrestling game ever. And that is including games from 2000 and 2001, okay? That was a bad idea. That was a bad idea. This Battlegrounds game should not be $60 come release. It should be $40, most. But WWE will try to charge $60. And me doing this channel and gaming coming in the very near future, I may have to actually buy this game for $60. And that's not something that I really want to do because I don't think the game's going to be worth $60. I don't think... I think when you first play it for the first couple times, you're going to say this game's kind of fun, it's different, it's arcade-like. And then you're going to say, okay, well, this game is kind of garbage. There's no replay value. It's cheesy, it's corny, and you have no wrestling game. AEW's also announced that they potentially, and I would think this is something that AEW would do flawless at. I think they would be flawless at making video games. Their TV has gotten a little bit better, you know, it's hit or miss, but I think um, AEW would make a really good wrestling game, and I'm not just saying that, because I think that their mind would be right where it needs to be, and if AEW was to make a wrestling game, I'd be right all on that, and I think we all would. Um, especially because WWE is the only one making a wrestling game right now. Uh, all the other games, you know, TNA made one years and years back. TNA's honestly, I'm not interested in anything TNA does, honestly. Uh, but they do have some talented names in TNA. Uh, but regardless, this game should not be $60, okay? It looks kind of pathetic. I don't think it's going to be very good, and I don't think there's going to be replay value. So if this is one of those games where you're going into it thinking, getting all excited, oh, I'm not going to judge it. I'm not going to judge it. I'm not going to judge the game. The thing is, is that I don't have to judge the game. I can tell you right now by looking at it, it's not going to be very good. Okay. When you're doing this for a while and you've been watching it 
and you know how their patterns in WWE, all the things that they like to do, you have a general idea of if a game is going to be good or not. This game does not look like it's going to be good. I'm sorry. I hate to break hearts, okay? Now, another thing to mention here is the game's rated T. Now, if I'm correct, I actually don't have it on me. I want to say WWE 2K20 was rated T also. I know some of their games used to be E10+. Plus. I think the WWE games always been rated T. Uh, I don't really think that's important at all. I just threw that out there. But, um... I don't know. You know, I really don't know. We're not going to ever see any gameplay. We're going to see gameplay. And we're going to, with, with 2K, well, it's not working with 2K. But what WWE likes to do is they like to have their gameplay for a game released about 10 minutes before it's supposed to be released. And it gives people a very small window of time to decide if they want to buy the game. People are going to buy it anyway. I'm going to buy it. I'm, I'm, let's be honest. We're all going to do it. Um, but that, that's, well, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing it is because I'm trying to make it my job. This whole gaming thing and whole YouTube is thing is, is, is I'm trying to have it go somewhere. And it's, it's getting its way there, but it's a very slow process. Um, but, again, that's just my thoughts on that. The game is what it is, you know? What did you expect? Um, I didn't expect, you know... Again, I try to go into it with the mindset of play the game first before you pass judgment. But based on how it looks, that is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at WWE All-Stars 2.0, and it is what it is. Apollo Crews is hurt. Damn it. Damn it. Apollo Crews has been used like... He hasn't even meant anything on WWE television for many years uh, following his main roster call-up. And all of a sudden, the pandemic hit, and we saw a match with him and Aleister Black run for nearly 30 minutes on Monday Night Raw. And, you know, one of the things I like about Apollo Crews is that I don't know if any of you watched his very short window in NXT. He's very athletic. He's very talented. But I think one of the things that he has to work on is just kind of his in-ring presence, kind of just how he comes off as a character. Uh, but I do, I do like Apollo Crews a lot, and it's unfortunate because we were starting to see him you know, given these these opportunities, you know, he had this match against Aleister Black. Then we see him have a U.S. title match this past Monday against Andrade. We knew he wasn't going to win, but he's starting to get these type of opportunities. And I think it's good because, you know, I, this is one of the things where, you know, if you guys follow EC3 on social media, he actually has uh, his page now is free EC3. So I guess he's building this kind of gimmick of where he's been trapped in some type of thing. And I think it's only a matter of time before AEW is knocking on EC3's door, if they haven't already. Um, I do think that uh, AEW is, is one of the... EC3 will be one of the wrestlers that find success outside of WWE after his tenure. Because WWE had no success. I loved him on NXT. Um, and the main roster, it was a joke. I, I think he was one of probably the most unrelevant irrelevant superstars on the main roster he was probably the one of the top three worst superstars to get hit by the main roster curse um and it was awful because i I love his theme song i've always been a big ec3 fan i loved ethan carter 3 on tna and all those kind of things but um i think that ec3 will find the success but regardless apollo cruz now again i don't know where they're going with this but it, he apparently suffered some type of injury on raw i did watch the match with him and andrade it looked like it could have been real but i don't know again how they're going to go about this and who's going to be the the person that is, is substituting his spot in um the uh money in the bank ladder match which is i believe next sunday if i'm correct time is flying here um but again you know apollo cruz to me is a guy that's very talented and it's unfortunate to see him get hurt we don't know how long he's going to be hurt um but he is going to miss money in the bank as of what it said um whether the injury is real or not, not quite sure. Again, we're going to have to uh, follow up on that and get different types of research and things that come along the way in regards to Apollo Crews' injury. But it's definitely unfortunate because I think he's a talent that was really just starting to to uh, get these opportunities. And um, hopefully uh, hopefully he comes to a speedy recovery. Speaking of recoveries, Jinder Mahal is back. And that's good, bad, and ugly. The good of that is that he's come back, and I never want to see a superstar. I never want to see anybody. Again, these are real-life people, by the way, folks. I never want to see a superstar or anybody not have work. But one of the things that I've, I've stated is that Jinder Mahal needs to stay away from the main event scene. His reign as WWE Champion was one of the worst, cha uh, worst reigns I've ever seen since I started watching the product. It was terrible. It, it was awful. The whole Mahal and Orton thing, just, just please stay away he needs to stay so far away from drew mcintyre but i have a very strong fear that he is going to be somewhere along the wwe title feud near SummerSlam, and that's what makes me nervous that's what makes me nervous because 
you know, Vince is, he's not one of those guys to create compelling television so much anymore. Okay, he was a mastermind at one point, very smart businessman, we all know this, but him seeing Jinder and Drew already having some type of history with each other, I think he's going to eat that up, and I do have a strong fear that Jinder Mahal is going to be in the main event scene. That needs to stop. That can't happen. I don't care where Jinder Mahal is, okay? And honestly, since he came back on Monday and he had this match where he won, he actually looked a little bit more realistic. He didn't look like he was all roided out. He had some time off. He was hurt. He was rehabilitating. And again, I think it's great that he's back. Um, you know, I never like to see anybody, uh, everybody ever struggle. I always like to see people overcome things and, and, and come back from injury. But uh, Jinder Mahal is, is a situation where good for him that he's back. But as long as he can stay away from the main event scene for a while, just just for a while, you got to stay away from it. Because Drew McIntyre has this thing going and, and you have to let it be organic. And it is organic right now. I don't think Seth Rollins should have been thrusted into a uh, a main event picture with with uh, Drew so so quickly because he lost the WrestleMania. Hey, you lost the WrestleMania. Here's your, uh, you know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. But from, from the Raw standpoint, there isn't really that many believable guys to go against Drew McIntyre right now. So, um, and to be honest, you know, Seth Rollins has really benefited from this pandemic because his character comes off as more sinister. There's no audience. It's just, honestly, from, from, from my honest opinion, and some people will disagree with this, I think that Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre for this short window of time have had some great promos and, and vignettes against each other to be honest i think it's been fantastic um so i'm looking forward to that but you do got to keep the title on drew uh gender whatever you do with him i don't care um good that he's back he looks he looks a little bit better he doesn't look as he looks a little bit more believable he doesn't look as roided up as he uh typically would um but again good to see him back um hopefully he is successful and hopefully he does not ruin any type of current storylines <clears throat> drew mcintyre uh that are going on right now and um kind of just you know just feeling out what what happens with jinder mahal but good to see him back stay away from the main event scene but he also stated now this was this was storyline related that he felt disrespected uh from the fans in the universe now this was storyline at first because i mean I, I wouldn't be surprised if he said it for real but uh after after reading it i was like oh it was a backstage interview it wasn't real um well you know what you were put into a main event scene that you clearly did not flourish in and it didn't work out good at all and they kept doing it and that was the result of it okay roman reigns went through all the criticism okay he's actually improved but um it is what it is right Switching over to the NFL, two NFL headlines. The first one I'm going to talk about is Brett Favre. Now, I wasn't going to make this an actual video, but I noticed I what I heard was Brett Favre stated that he was saying that he does not think Aaron Rodgers will retire a Packer. Now, my first reaction to that is Brett Favre is a very valid opinion in and around football history. But when you hear something like that, you say, okay, but where is Aaron Rodgers going to go? That's my point. He's at a point where he's later in his career. He's one of the best quarterbacks ever. He's on a team that he's very familiar with. But where is Aaron Rodgers going to go? I can't. He's one of those guys, maybe not to the extent of Drew Brees, but I can't see Aaron Rodgers in another uniform. I really can't. Um, now, one of the reasons, now I don't know if this is one of the reasons why Brett Favre said it. I don't know exactly how Aaron Rodgers feels about the Packers. Because again, that that hasn't come out. You know, I'm sure he loves his teammates and he, and he loves the organization and fans. But how does he feel about the Packers? What was his thoughts? And again, these may have actually been dropped as well. What was his thoughts about them trading up? Not only just getting it, the very first pick and trading up to get Jordan Love. Now, the I'm sure the Packers' idea was they want Jordan Love to have time to sit behind Aaron Rodgers and learn what he can before Aaron Rodgers is gone, and they want to make sure Jordan Love is prepped to be the guy to take over for Aaron Rodgers when his time as a Packer or in the NFL is done, okay? But some people are looking at it from the standpoint of, is this my replacement? Mm, I would say a large portion of what has not gone right for the Packers is not Aaron Rodgers' fault. I think Aaron Rodgers is the last guy to put blame on because everybody wants to blame a quarterback. Everybody wants to blame the quarterback. This is this guy's fault. This guy's fault, yada, yada, yada. But what people don't realize is it's not always the quarterback, 
okay? And Aaron Rodgers has long proven himself to be a very elite and unbelievable talent, okay? He hasn't always been surrounded by the talent. He didn't get along with Mike McCarthy. The Packers, I don't think, have done the best job of, of always giving Aaron Rodgers support, you know? And, and I think that there's been coaching problems along the way. I think Aaron Rodgers is, is, has done very good in, a, in, in some crappy situations. I don't think that the, the Packers have always provided Aaron Rodgers with the right amount of talent and help. And I don't think sometimes Aaron Rodgers gets the credit that he deserves for dealing with that. That's one of the things why some people I don't like when they crap on Daniel Jones, not to compare Daniel Jones, but they'll say that, oh, Daniel Jones fumbles all the time. He has no line. He has no line. You have to look at it from a standpoint. It's his first year. He's just getting his feet wet in the NFL. And he's on a team that is not good at all. They have no defense. The defense doesn't hold him down. I think Daniel Jones, honestly, I can't say he had a bad rookie season. I really can't. Yeah, he's got a fumble problem, but I can't sit here and say the guy's not good. I still think Daniel Jones is the answer for the Giants. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, but uh, that that's one of the things. It's not so much of him leaving the Packers. It's where he's going to go. Now, again, Tom Brady is a prime example of, of he'll never leave the Patriots. But he did. He did. But that team was, was, was self-destructing long before... Tom Brady left this was the first year where I feel like the Patriots were not the Patriots and even though they started off 8-0 the second half of the season bit them right in the ass and you know their defense was phenomenal but the offensive weapons weren't there Gronk was missing the running game was was hit or miss you know Edelman was there but he didn't really have the targets you know it's it, things weren't going right Brady was was struggling he wasn't he was overthrowing he wasn't he was you know all those things I don't see that with Aaron Rodgers as much. I think that he needs help, but I don't see Aaron Rodgers underperforming. I see the Packers not supplying him with the right talent. And that's one of the, the, the problems uh, with that. So it's not so much that. I just, I don't know where he's going to go. It's one of those things where it's like, well, where is somebody of Aaron Rodgers going to fit? You know, the Chargers, Dolphins drafted quarterbacks. Drew Brees is staying on the Saints. And, and you know that Aaron Rodgers is not going to go to any team that is less than what the Packers are. And the Packers are a good team, but there there's certain things that they're missing. You know, anybody could, a lot of teams could have one great wide receiver, but they need a wide receiving core. And that's what I think a lot of teams don't have. Devontae Adams is a great wide receiver, but I feel like, I, I don't I don't know. I just feel like there's something with the Packers, and again, maybe you Packers fans could tell me, where it just doesn't gel right. I don't think I don't see Aaron Rodgers playing for any other football team. I don't. Is it possible? Yes. But I don't know where he would go. Where is he gonna go? You know, all these guys getting drafted to these teams. I mean, I could never I really I mean, you can never say never, but I don't think it would make any sense for someone like Aaron Rodgers to go to Chicago. I can't see that. I can't see that. Same division? Nah. Nah. Aaron Rodgers will stay way out of the AFC or the NFC North. I'm sorry. So I don't really think he's going to go anywhere. But Brett Favre's opinion is always valid. And uh, we, that's one of the things we've got to appreciate. But I don't see Brett Favre going or Brett Favre going anywhere. Shit. Yeah, Brett Favre went. He got here. Yeah, he went rounds around the NFL. Um, I don't see Aaron Rodgers going anywhere. Where's he going to go? You know what I mean? Um, but that's, that's just my opinion on that. Uh, and the last NFL topic is Andy Dalton has been released by the Bengals. Now, we all knew long before it happened that the first pick in the draft was going to be Joe Burrow. The Bengals are 100% behind Joe Burrow, and they are his guy going forward. Are their, He is their guy going forward. The problem is, is that Andy Dalton was not working out for the Bengals. He was making a lot of mistakes. He didn't fit the team's gel. I can't blame it all on him again. The Bengals have a lot of problems. But I do feel some type of sympathy for Andy Dalton. But in the same way, Andy Dalton was released today by the Bengals. Um, they're 100% behind Joe Burrow. And if this doesn't show you, I don't know what does. But the problem now is he has been released. But I don't think Andy Dalton will have that much trouble finding a place to go. I think Andy Dalton will keep playing football, but it's where. Now, there's backup options. Um... You know, New England, different places. Uh, I don't know if they would like somebody like that. But I do think that Andy Dalton will find work in another team. But I don't think he's going to be a starter. I think there's a lot of starting quarterbacks now that are set where they are. Um, but it's interesting to see where Andy Dalton goes from here. That was just a quick, you know, there's not too much to talk about by that. But Andy Dalton is released. And, of course, we wish him as fans the best. But where does he go? And that, that's really the question. 
uh, because there are a lot of quarterback positions that are not as open as they were a month ago. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe and like button.